G'day guys, welcome to Rumble's Fish Room. So, I started recording this video on my phone about four hours ago, not even two hours, three hours ago. And I realized that's just not good enough. Like, I've got such good equipment for filming, why the hell would I film on my four year old phone to post it to an audience that potentially will reach like I don't know, obviously I've got like nearly 2,000 subscribers um, and I've just dropped the ball and I've let the team down, haven't I? Um, I've got the little Lavelle mic, which it's a really good mic. I, I've got a Rode Wireless Go 2, um, very high-end mic as well. It's been sitting for that long that the battery is completely dead. Um, I had to find my camera. I had to find the batteries. They weren't even in it. I had to charge the batteries. Um, and through that process, I was pretty disappointed in myself. Um, uh, if you didn't hear, Perth Cichlid Society shut down yesterday, which is also sad. Um, if you're not on the pa Facebook page, that will keep running. If you jump on that Facebook page, you'll actually see a photo of me from exactly 10 years ago. Now it's not to the month, but it's 2014. Um, so maybe I'll try and make that photo, the thumbnail for this video. It basically marks 10 years of fisher keeping for me. Now, um, I did keep fish before that, so it's kind of a bit clickbaity, I guess. Um, prior to that, I only had a display tank at my parents' house with like um, fish shop fish, nothing nice, if that makes sense. Um, not that, not fish shop, sorry, pet shop fish. There's a difference. Fish shop fish and pet shop fish are different. I had chain store fish, um, angel, garami, and all that jazz. In saying that, I've always really wanted to breed garamis. Um, I don't know why. Maybe because it's one of the first fish I had. Um, I could never justify it in my current fish room because the smallest tank is like 200 litres. There's some which are a little bit smaller maybe, but they're meant, they're meant to be only for fry. Um, but basically, I've always stuck to fish that suit the tanks instead of breeding the fish that I want to, if that makes sense. And I designed the tanks around what I wanted to breed at the time, but I didn't Our, our thoughts change, you know, like we get excited about different fish. Um, my camera looks like it's wigging out a little bit in the brightness and all that jazz. Uh, you'll have to bear with me because I let the camera sit with no battery in it for so long. Um, it's lost all its settings. So um, we're on default settings right now, which I can see it's going bright, dark, bright, dark. Um, Obviously, I can't even remember. Yeah, the ISO. The ISO is jumping from like 200 to 600. <laughs> um, all right, just bear with the pitch quality for me. Go with, bear with me for this video, guys. Um, I'll, I don't know if my camera will hold settings now that I've used it. Maybe I'll try to keep a battery in it and only do quick switches of batteries. I might have killed the inner storage battery in the camera. If anybody knows an answer to that, let me know. Um, so 10 years ago, probably maybe 10 and a half years ago, um, my, I met my wife like 11 years ago or something and she started staying over um 
she started tell, telling me how like she's got a fish tank at her, or not telling me I saw it she had a fish tank at her parents um, and basically the the um, she moved in with me and left the fish tank at her parents and fun fact the fish tank's still running today it's got Australian rainbows in it um, it's a three by two and a half by two maybe it's one of the it's a I think it's an aqua one they're quite skinny but like two and a half to three foot tall I think two and a half foot tall um, so kind of similar to the tank behind me but only three foot wide I actually have a five foot sitting at work for the in-laws so they're going to upgrade that but that's a whole another story for another day um, some of the OGs might remember the tank at work that's on the timber frame that we clattered on the channel and I wrapped it in like a white um, malamine if you remember that drop a comment anyway it's still sitting at my work in front of my office um, anyway so what happened right um, so the wife was missing her fish and I said to one of the guys at work like I'm thinking about getting a fish tank again I had one when I was a kid and um rah 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 anyway he goes I know somebody selling glass the tank's not built but it's cheap so if you from back on the channel you remember my old tank it was 1500 liters uh, it was eight foot seven by two foot seven by two foot seven very odd size in millimeters I think it was 3650 by 790 by 790 maybe I can't remember or maybe it was yeah it was basically 800 um, it was it's actually still going it's in Bunbury I've actually messaged the current owner and told them I suggest a reseal because it's over 10 years old at this stage and it's right at the limit it's 1500 litres and it's 12 mil glass um, the knowledge I have now I wouldn't build a tank that thin but the fact that it's held up for over 10 years is pretty cool keeping in mind I had zero knowledge on fish keeping or building tanks prior to that I just walked into um, Vivas because it was the closest store to me and I said I need silicon to stick a tank together and they sold me some silicon and um, I remember it was just called construction adhesive <laughs> and it's still going pl 10 plus years on um, you probably, if you're on my um, Facebook page you probably see me post like old photos of me laying in the tank um, siliconing it up I'm pretty sure I cried during the stress of trying to glue it, seal it because um, I was trying to do it in one hit like obviously silicon can't stick to silicon when it dries I had no experience and um, I think I got super frustrated anyway so basically the history of my fish keeping my first serious tank was 1500 litres now I stuffed up big time when I set the tank up I bought an FX5 X, FX5 um, which are rated for 1500 litres let me tell you they are not um, although they are a great filter I think I got my B in my bonnet from the start because mine A didn't do 1500 litres when it said it would and B um, it used to shut off to do the prime cycle and not turn back on so I had two issues with it and they kind of stuck with me <laughs> 10 years later I still wouldn't recommend that filter to anyone because of those two reasons <laughs> pretty silly really pretty silly um, so yeah basically then I upgraded I had an FX6 and two I don't think they were 2700s maybe like 1800s I think one was aqua one and one was an eBay special 
I've had super good luck with the eBay canisters, the white ones, not the grey ones. Um, the white ones with the blue button on the top. Um, I've actually had better luck with them than the aqua ones. Nautilus 2700, I love those filters. They work so good in my opinion, um, but they always bloody leak. <laughs> Um, the one that's right behind me now, uh, if the power goes out, the main seal on the canister leaks and I've put a new seal in it. I've actually changed the bottom half of the case with another case and it still leaks, but it doesn't leak every time. I'll give it that much, but I've got it sitting inside a tub, 50 liters, and this tank has a wheel. So if the power goes out, I'm lucky enough that it leaks but it doesn't fill that tub up before the weir drains or gets low enough that it's not leaking anymore the only bad thing about that is when the power comes back on the water level is too low for the filter to work so it does take some fixing after a power outage but it, it, it doesn't cause damage um, I was going to sell this tank to my in-laws and then I didn't and then now I'm giving them a five foot because the four foot is nice but the space they've got is quite huge I'd rather give them the bigger tank and then I've also got a seven by two by two sitting at work I was thinking about it's, it's got a cracked front I was actually thinking about going baller and buying a piece of low iron, low iron glass for the front of it and giving them that and just like full sending a display tank for them. Um, obviously it would be a feature on the channel. Um, so yeah, then I ended up with this massive tank. Uh, I put like a hundred fish in there, like anything you can think of. There was um, fire mouths, there was green Texas, there was clown loaches, there was electric yellows, there was electric blues, there was um, I think there was a couple of carvers in there at one stage. Like, it was literally like I went to this auction and I just bought whatever was in my budget and I just threw it all in this tank. Um, so then, fun fact on that, um, underneath the tank there was enough room to fit a two by two foot cube. It was a little bit different size to that, but it was close to that two foot cube. Um, I think it was two and a half tall and it was like just under two foot wide but it was two and two foot deep anyway imagine a two foot cube um and in the big tank i had albino grishaki and i decided to pull all the albino, albino grishaki out of the big tank and put them into the little tank to breed them and it was on from there like that was the beginning and that was not the end, what, what's the opposite to the end, the beginning, the continuation. Um, I was in, a, we were in a rental, the tanks were outside. I was dealing with temperature fluctuation. It was a bad time, they were under the patio. In summer, you think that would be the bad time. It wasn't, it was actually the lows in the winter. Um, by the time I'd get home from work, like temperatures would be stable at like 27 degrees. But I'm, I'm like 99% sure that overnight they were dropping and I just didn't see it because looking back now, like I was getting quite a lot of fish fatality and um, I don't think I ever had tanks under filtered once I first, besides that, the very start. So the temperature is what I put it down to. As soon as I moved into this house, I turned the bedroom into a fish room. Um, I wish I had YouTube then. It was comical how many tanks I squeezed in a suburban sized bedroom. Um, I guess it's kind of comical how many tanks I've squeezed in my fish room. Yeah. Well, my fish room, the tanks aren't really comical. It's the liters. I think uh, the whole fish room 
is 15,000 litres and it's 6 metres by 3.6 metres. But that's including the um, stingray tank, which I need to fix. Um, I've got plenty of unfinished projects that I need to take care of. I think as far as the fish room, the main one is fixing that stingray tank. One of my five foots leaked while I've been off camera. I just drained it. I haven't fixed it. Um, it's annoying. It's the same one that leaked a couple of years ago and it started leaking again. Um, I sold off a heap of fish. Um, I didn't even advertise anything. I had a few people message me. Um, I've still got a lot of them. I guess we'll do a bit of a walk around. Um, I ended up, I got the Argentas in here. They're not very growing very well in here. Um, I just put it down to the tank being too small. This tank's on automatic water changes. Um, so it's not water quality. I actually just gave it a scrub before this video so I was also waiting for it to settle but it started to get a bit late so I just um, I'm filming the video with it a bit sedimenty but I want to get a flipper you know like um, well if you know what a flipper is you know what it is but they're like a hundred bucks and I've put it off for probably like three or four years since having this tank um i guess like before this tank i would do i don't know what i used to do with the eight foot but for some reason i find this tank super hard to clean um i don't remember it's so long ago but anyway, I want to get a flipper for this tank. I was going to sell the tank. Now I'm not. So now I want a flipper. Um, I've thought about selling this tank and making a custom tank for this wall. The only reason I haven't is because uh, time, really. If I did, it'd be a low iron front. Um, may even be a ply tank but I think a ply tank would look shit in the house what do you guys reckon uh, the future plans I think I'm going to buckle down on flower horns well I, sa I said that I've said that for the last 12 months really I think I've said it in a video recent or not recently but not far down the list of videos um I, s I sold a few on the weekend, which cleared some space. Um, and I just want to buckle down and send it. I I'm getting asked for fish for sale, for flower horns specifically, so often as of recent. I think the main reason now at the moment is everybody that I know that's a flower horn breeder in WA stopped. Um, I know of two people starting up, but obviously they've got to learn the culling process, um, all that sort of jazz. But I know one of them has some good ingredients. I was in conversation with one of them trying to sort out some deals. I was going to give him, I actually offered him a fish for free and then he just ghosted me, so I won't say his name, but if you're watching, hit me back up. Like, I honestly, at this stage, if anyone in WA is dead serious about breeding flower horns, I'll give you a pair, like for absolutely zero dollars, just as long as you work with me, because I, I lost my breeding partners due to the cost of living. Um, and honestly, Losing them lines up with when I stopped recording videos. It lines up with when I stopped breeding. 
I need that conversation to keep the projects going. Like, I guess it's like anything really, isn't it? Like, if you're not talking about it, you forget about it. Is that just like me being like a neurodivergent or is, is that just like being human? Like, I can come home and just not even remember that I own a fish room if like, I'm not talking about it, like, you can even ask my missus, like, back in the day my phone was blowing up, like, always talking to someone about fish, and it, I think it just doesn't happen anymore, so it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind. I think automatic water changes played a big role in um, me being able to just close my eyes about the hobby, if that makes sense. Um, Everything's auto water changed now. Um, this tank is auto water changed. The koi pond, I've got a timer on it. The koi pond's leaking. <laughs> so I've got a timer with a tap and it just tops up and that's my water change on the pond. <laughs> I've got gum trees growing in my aquaponics and then the fish rooms are automatic water change and I've shut down every other tank. I wanna sell the IBCs with the eight foot, but I just can't see it happening as is like, I, the only way I can see me selling that is if I were to take the eight foot off the top, cut the um, frame off and weld legs back on it and sell the eight foot on the stand. And then the IBCs, I think I would just get market value for them. Um, it do, I don't think that project owes me a lot. I can't remember which eight foot that is. I think I got that tank for free. I think the most expensive part of that tank is the expander foam, <laughs> which is the, also the ugliest part of that stand. Um, if I got rid of that, it would just free up so much real estate in my shed. And um, if I get rid of a few species in the fish room, I'll have, I don't need the IBCs to grow out. And I don't know what it is about IBCs. Maybe you found the same thing, but fish don't grow well in them. Um, I've heard that fish grow better in them when they're cut in half, which is strange. But anyway, guys, the camera's about to die. I didn't fully charge the battery. Let me know what you think. Um, thinking about bringing Friday Night Live back, we'll see. And I'm thinking about scheduling a weekly video. Um, that idea comes from Elnix Adventures on YouTube. Um, they only post once a week, and me and my wife look forward to that. So I'm thinking about trying to create that scenario myself. Let me know what you think. But anyway, guys, it was good just to have a chat to you. Peace out. I hope you enjoyed it.